What is up guys, I'm back with another video and if you remember a while ago I did a video on Android L and we took a look at what the new OS looked like with the new material design and everything. However, back then it was known as Android L but it's now known as Android 5.0 or Android Lollipop and I actually have here with me my Nexus 5 running the latest developer preview of Android 5.0. This new developer preview is a lot more polished than the previous one we took a look at and if you have a Nexus 5 or a Nexus 7 and you want to try it out for yourself I will leave the links down below in the description. In this video, we'll just be going over what's new or what has changed since we last took a look at Android L. So first up, the default launcher in Android L has changed, and we now have this new material sort of design when you open the app drawer. So instead of just bringing up a new screen, it actually adds a layer of hierarchy to the entire launcher itself, making it seem as if the apps just go straight back into that little circle when you close it back. So this really adds to the material, look and feel and design, but I'm still not exactly too sure how I feel about it as yet. But keep in mind that this is not the final or finished product, so a lot of things can be changed before it releases officially. The navigation bar at the bottom is also changed, but slightly. So last time around they were a bit larger and I wasn't too happy with how they looked, but this time around they are a bit smaller and just small enough to make them look much much better. We are still not sure if these are the final navigation buttons for Android L, but the smaller size really makes them look a lot more polished. There's now also the ability to have different users. So this was available previously on Android KitKat, but only on tablet devices. Now with Android 5.0, we have it on our smartphones. Changing users work just as they do on Windows or Mac. So every third party app you download or every setting you change is to that specific user. So if you were to create a guest user, there would be no downloaded apps and the settings would be just basically default. This would come in extremely handy if there are more than one person using one device or just basically if you'd prefer to create a guest user with certain specific applications for when people ask you to see your phone you can just sign into that user and let them see it and they won't have any access to your personal content. Pulling down from the top reveals the notification panel and it looks exactly the way it did the last time we looked at Android L. But this time though if you take a look at the top right at those little icons there's some really smooth and cool animations going on at the top there. So you can actually see the settings gear icon rolling in while the battery slides over to the left to reveal the percentage. And it's these small little attention to detail and these little things that make the entire experience with Android L a whole lot more polished. The brightness slider is now also changed. So from the time you rest your finger on it, the entire quick settings panel disappears, allowing you to see exactly what is on your screen at the time of changing the brightness. This really helps in choosing a more accurate screen brightness depending on what you are looking at. Something I actually came across my mistake was if you hit the cell service icon on the quick settings panel, it gives you an overview of how much data you've been using. And while this is just an overview, you can just hit that more settings option at the bottom and it takes you directly into the data usage section of the settings menu. Another thing with Android L is the ability to see what application is sending you a specific notification. So by touching and holding on that notification, you'll see the original app as well as an information button which you can click on to then allow or block notifications from that app or to set it as a priority application. Google now can now overlay whatever you're doing, providing that the result it needs to give doesn't require much screen real estate. So asking what is the time will just display it over whatever you're doing, whereas asking something like what is the weather or a more in-depth search actually takes you to the Google Now screen. Swiping left on the home screen takes you to Google Now as usual, but I've noticed with Android 5.0 that these suggestions now have a colored header, and I've seen them in different colors before but at the time of shooting the video they only showed up in one color. So as of now, I don't know why, how, or when exactly they change colors. Something else I've noticed is that the search bar at the top of the Google Now screen animates when sliding back over to the home screen depending on where it is on the Google Now screen. So if it's above, it actually slides back down when you slide over to the home screen. But if you're straight up to the top on the Google Now screen, it has no animation when sliding back to the home screen because the search bar is in the same place. So if you remember a while back in the last Android L video, Tapping on the Android version multiple times which should have brought up the easter egg brought up a very weird looking screen with some rectangles and it definitely looked like a placeholder at the time. But this time with the latest developer preview, the easter egg is a lot more interesting. We now have a flappy bird type of game except it's with an android figure and some lollipops as tunnels. And it's significantly harder than flappy bird and I've only managed to get 3 as my high score after a lot of attempts. The stock clock app didn't get as much of a redesign as the other system apps, but I don't know if you noticed it on camera but there's a slight fade in when you open the clock app for the first time. And there are multiple color profiles that change throughout the day. 
So in the morning you'll get brighter colors, whereas in the evening and night you'd get darker colors. Another thing I've actually happened to notice by accident is that if you touch and hold one of the app icons in the multitasking tree, it takes you to the individual settings of that specific application, where you can clear the cache, clear the data, clear defaults, or even uninstall the application. You might not notice this at first glance, but if you take a closer look when I'm actually pressing the lock button, you'll notice that the screen actually turns black and white before turning off. So instead of the CRT animation like previous versions of Android, we now have this animation. The camera app also gets its share of material design with the ripple animations on the shutter button, as well as the transition when changing between different modes. Overall performance has significantly increased with this version of the developer preview. Everything just seems a lot more faster, more polished, and just more smooth on the whole. In addition to the specific improvements, the new animations really give a strong sense of hierarchy in the sense that everything has a certain place that it comes from, and when you close it, it goes back to that specific place. So nothing just appears on the screen like it did in previous versions of Android, and even in iOS, when you open an app, it just appears. But on this new version of Android, when you open an app, it slides up from the bottom, and when you close it, it slides straight back to where it came from. Even in third-party apps like Twitter and Facebook, when you click on a link that opens another app, the current app, Twitter or Facebook, actually slides down on the Z-axis deeper into the screen, while the new app slides over that app onto the top. And when you go back to the previous app, the new app slides back down and you get your Twitter and Facebook coming back up from the Z-axis. And I mean, this little attention to detail, as I said before, really gives a premium feel to the new OS and I'm definitely looking forward to see the final version of Android L. If you're also waiting patiently for Android L to be released officially, definitely let me know in the comments below. But that's been it for this video guys. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up below. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.